Go with five point zero seven. Today we're going to be using um, a table or a sketch a graph uh, to justify some conclusions about situations. So we're still going to be working with exponential functions, and we're still going to be looking at um, you know the different functions and maybe their, some of their graphs. Uh, but now we're going to want to make some conclusions just by drawing a rough sketch or looking at a table of values. Uh, to start off, let's pick up where we ended. So we have this fisherman who illegally introduces some fish into a lake, and they quickly begin to propagate. The growth of the illegal fish population is modeled by the function p of x, which is 5 times b to the x, where x is the time in weeks since the fish were introduced, and p is the number of fish. b is a positive value, um, which is currently uh, unknown. Got cut off. And the questions that we might want to ask ourselves are, how many fish did the fishermen actually release into the lake? Um, and then we might also be curious, what is this missing B value? And so those are the things that um, we're going to go through and try and find. So um, how many fish were released into the lake? And then find the B value if you know the lake contains 33 illegal fish after eight weeks and explain why your answer makes sense. And then C, uh, suppose that P of X is equal to 5 times 2 to the X. By what percent does the fish population grow each week? So a lot of things to work through. Um, I will say that for part C, thinking about the aim that we have this uh, today, you might want to consider constructing a quick sketch of the graph um, to sort of make sure that your answer seems to make sense. All right, so here are the, the answers. The, uh, go over them quickly. Um, for A, we want to know how many fish um, did the fishermen release into the lake, and so that's when the time uh, is zero, or x is equal to zero. And so I plug in x uh, value of zero, and I get uh, five times one, which is five fish. For B, we want to find the value of B, and uh, notice that they give us a point that we can use. So the lake contains 33 of the illegal fish after 8 weeks. So the x value would be 8, and then the output would have to be 33. So solving for b, I get that b is approximately 1.27, and so my function is 5 times 1.27 to the x. Now this makes sense because my b value here is greater than 1, and so I'm expecting that my function is going to grow over time. Um, and that's what I'd expect. I'd expect the fish population to propagate or grow. For C, instead of our equation that we found, imagine that the B value is 2. What percent does the fish population grow each week? So here, there's a couple ways to think of it. The first is that if my B value is 2, if the base is 2, well, when B increases, I'm sorry, when X increases by 1, that means I multiply by another 2. In other words, I'm doubling, and I can see this process. So I can think of it from week to week. So starting with 0, I have 5. In one week, I then get to 10. In two weeks, I get to 20. If I did three weeks, I'd get to 40. What I can see is that the population is doubling, right? That's because my B value is 2. Well, if something is doubling, think about it this way. If you had $5, and then you all of a sudden have $10, what percentage did your amount increase by? Well, it increased by a hundred percent because all of what you had was five and that's how much it increased by. So the fish population grows by a hundred percent each week, or in other words, doubles, and that's going to be a good thing. Doubling is increasing by a hundred percent. And that's not really intuitive um, when you say it, but it should make sense now that we kind of understand how exponential functions work. All right, now let's move on to a slightly new uh, concept. The function f of x is equal to 7 times e to the x plus 35. Um, it measures the number of flies in a garden after x days. So here you see this uh, e here, and you might think that this is an, a, a variable or a constant that we haven't solved for, but it's actually it's a constant that we know the value of. It's called Euler's constant, it's pronounced Euler's constant, and it's um, it's a lowercase e, and it is a number that goes on forever, but is always the same value. That's why it's a constant, and it's approximately 2.7182. So in practice, if we abbreviate, we might use 2.718, uh, 
And on all calculators, um, most calculators, there is a button that you can use to represent E so that um, your calculator will input that value for you. So the base of my function here is E, meaning that I'm raising this number to the x power to compute the value of my function. So right off the bat, the first question that you might ask is what's happening to the flies in the garden? So pause the video and just write down what's happening to the flies in the garden after, um, uh, as the x days go on. All right. Um, so knowing that our base value is Euler's constant, and don't worry, we're going to talk more about this and you'll learn um, more about why it's so important later on. Uh, we know that the number of flies is going to increase because this exponential function has a base greater than 1, and so this value is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But now we want to look at the big picture, right? So let's try and sketch a graph of the function, and I want you to make sure that you're showing some of the things that we'd want to see, such as the initial value and the basic shape of the function. Okay? So go ahead and sketch that graph out. Make sure to label your axes and um, then compute the number of flies that should be in the garden after four days. So first look at your graph, see if you can kind of ascertain that, and then um, actually compute the exact value using the function. All right, so the basic shape of the function, it's an exponential function which is increasing um, at a greater and greater rate over time. And uh, the initial values can be 42 because when the x uh, is 0, in other words, at the beginning, uh, when we start measuring, this will be 7 times 1 plus 35, which is going to be 42. Now, from this graph, it's going to be kind of hard for me, unless I actually plot some of these points, to figure out what the value after 4 days is. And so the, the point of this question is for us to realize that if we want to have a really accurate graph, we're actually going to need to compute some of these points. So go ahead and compute f of 4, which will be 7 times e to the 4th plus 35. And what you can do is you can go to Wolfram Alpha, and if you just type in lowercase e, so you type in this whole... Um, expression with a lowercase e here, it will compute it for you. And what you will get is approximately 417.19. So if you get 417.19, the answer to how many flies are in the garden after four days, well you can't have 0.19 of a fly, so you would probably round to 400 and either 18 if you were always rounding up, or you might round to the nearest whole number, which would give you 417 flies. So we're going to continue looking at functions which have um, uh, e as the base, because we're going to see a lot of these. And so the function here, f of x, um, describes the percentage of information that a particular person remembers x weeks after learning the information. So before even looking at the equation again, I want you to pause the video and just think about what you would expect to happen, how much of the information are you going to remember as the number of weeks after you've learned it gets bigger and bigger. Well, just if you're, unless you're superhuman, chances are that as time goes on, you're going to remember less and less of the information. So you'd expect that this function here is going to decrease over time, okay? And we would like to get an idea of exactly how that's going to look. So um, in order to do this, let's try and sketch a graph of this function um, showing some of those key points. So remember some of the key points, initial value, right? How much do you remember exactly um, right after learning the information? And then at some, some values later on. And here's what is important to remember. If we're unsure, right, about the direction that our exponential function should go, um, well, then what we need to do is we need to actually plot some points to see if we can get an idea of what's happening. So if you need to, go ahead and plot some points and um, go ahead and give it your best shot, and then uh, we'll talk about it. 
All right, so um, the important thing to do here is notice that we have a negative exponent. And what we should remember is that if we have a negative exponent, then we can rewrite it as follows. So it would be 80 times. And if I have a negative exponent, I now can write this as 1 over e to the positive version of the exponent, which would be positive 0.5 x plus 20. All right, And so now what we can take a look at is, well, we know that a base that's greater than 1 continue being raised to higher and higher powers is going to increase. So if I have a fraction 1 over that value, this fraction is going to get smaller and smaller, meaning that the amount that I multiply 80 by is going to be smaller and smaller and smaller. So what I might think about is where does my function start and then everywhere from then on out it's going to be decreasing. So we can use this now to plot some points and I encourage you to do so and we'll take a look at what our function should look like more in detail tomorrow.